I would never have friends. Friends are a distraction. The only thing I care about is work, work, and work. Ultimately, the only thing that matters in life is success and achievement. If you're not successful, that means you're a weak failure. The only way for people to ever love you is for you to be a successful, rich, and wealthy person. And truth is, if you don't get to be the top 1%, Nobody's ever gonna notice or care about you. If you find yourself saying things like this, you might have CEO disorder. And CEO disorder, not SEO disorder, that's something different, <laughs> is when you glamorify what we could call burnout culture. Okay, so CEO disorder is this uh, undiagnosed mental illness uh, or neuropsychiatric disorder or some kind of disability, right? Because ultimately, well, we can look at in these people as well while they might appear to be professionally accomplished and while they might earn money and while they might have managed to put together businesses a lot of these people suffer from chronic loneliness and dissatisfaction a lot of the time when we look at these kinds of characters most of them will say things like oh i don't wish this life on anyone and ultimately you know i'm just lonely and yeah while i have my work and while I work hard and while I do that, you know, I'm not happy, you know. Uh, people that sell success will often tell you that this is not a recipe for happiness. And the best way to, if you want to be successful, is to just let go of the idea of being happy. Just surrender, just be depressed, just accept you're depressed, just keep working anyways, right? Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about the strength of CEO disorder because I don't believe it's just a genuine disability. I do see the skill and I do see something admirable in this kind of mindset, right? Because what you're really showing here is discipline, right? Discipline, conscientiousness, and a hard work ethic, right? And what do we see this in? Well, typically people that have a strong judging personality preference, right? And the stronger the preference, the more likely that this person is going to be at risk of having. CEO disorder, right? So we can say it's a disorder when it's something that has started to take and tip over the balance in your psyche to the point where you can't manage anything else. The only thing you can ever think about is being proactive. You have to be the person that takes initiative. You have to always be one step ahead of everyone else. You always have to lead race. And feeling this way obviously leads to a lot of stress. It leads to a uh, high risk of burnout and it leads to a risk of depression and most of these people struggle to maintain long-term relationships and social friendships. A lot of the time these people are highly transactional, thinking only about professional value and about success in a business setting, but can suffer emotionally for example or in their private life. Many of these people don't have any time for anything but work. Now. We could say that in some ways CEO disorder is the opposite of what we today call ADHD. While ADHD is marked by an inability to engage in executive function, when we look at CEO disorder, what we can see is a perhaps abnormal executive function, right? So an unusual amount of ability to engage in executive judgment, discernment, and discipline. That means you can shut down any negative emotions, you can ignore any form of stress, you can ignore physical signs of illness, you can ignore struggles, uh, you can ignore health problems, while you steal yourself on the path to success. And here, this is the gist of the problem. Often, when we don't prioritize our personal needs and when we don't listen to our emotions and when we overmanage or over compartmentalize our emotions, we risk neglecting feelings of hurt, stress, and health issues. And so we risk these issues becoming chronic, big problems later on in life. And so many of these people never get to be part of that 1%. Many of them collapse on the way to the end of the race.